guys, uh, welcome back to Ex Shonica. Uh, today I'll be talking about taking a, uh, a key from a, a pretty tough shot. Uh, usually when you're in a studio, you light your green screen or blue screen a certain way to where there's no shadows, there's nothing, and the key is pretty simple. Uh, when you're out in the elements though, you don't always get that chance. Uh, so as you know, for the uh, chopper scene, and if you've seen the behind the scenes of Drunk Gamer, uh, we pretty much just hung me from a tree in a goofy old rope harness. And <clears throat> my shadow was on that blue screen, so it was a really tough key to pull. And so I'll give you some quick tips and tricks on uh, how to pull a key from a uh, tough shot. So uh, we want to go into After Effects and uh, check it out. Hey guys, welcome to After Effects. Uh, my interface might look a little bit different than yours, but that's because I work on uh, two monitors and I've compressed it down into one monitor for the screen recording. Uh, we're going to talk about the blue screen key, and uh, like I said, it's kind of a trickier one, so I'll show you some uh, quick tips inside of uh, the plugin. It's called Key Light that will help you pull a pretty decent key from uh, tough green screen footage. Uh, I'm also going to show you technique on how to uh, streamline your uh, render times with your with Key Light because it's kind of a render hog, and uh, these te this technique beforehand will uh, minimize the amount of space Key Light actually has to uh, key from. So uh, here we go. Take your pin tool, which is up here by the text in the in the square, and basically just kind of quick and dirty. I'm gonna do it real fast because I don't want to waste your time with a bunch of needless rotoing. Uh, mask out your your uh, screen area. It's called a garbage mat, and basically it just takes away all the stuff around the outside, which is called uh, the garbage area. And uh, so now you got your blue screen up here. Uh, then you're gonna want to come over to your effects and presets and type in color key. Uh, this is one of the two effects that will help streamline your uh, key light plugin. So then take your color swatch, dip it into a very uh, general blue area. I like to use the lighter one because that's where most most of the blue on the screen screen is lighter. And uh, start to bump up your color tolerance. And we'll go to uh, 69. 69 looks good. That's pretty solid. Uh, and so as you can see, we'll toggle on the alpha, you can see that we pull a key, but the problem there is are obviously the shadows and uh, some of this blue around in here. So if you want to take some of that out as well, you can duplicate your color key with uh, Apple D or Command or uh, Control D. Take your color swatch again and uh, kind of pull in some of that darker blue. And uh, that should really be able to uh, suck out a lot of the blue around there. So now we're just left with the shadows. Uh, the next effect is called a simple choker. And uh, what that does is either uh, chokes down your alpha channel or it expands your alpha channel. In our case, we want to expand it to we have a nice little blue ridge around the outside of uh, myself or the, the key. And so uh, after that, we want to apply a key light, which is a very powerful uh, keying plugin for After Effects. Uh, take the screen color, color swatch, and uh, select just a blue area around the out outline. And as you can see, it takes away a ton of uh, the remaining blue. <laughs> Uh, but we also still have the shadows. And so what I like to do is take the screen gain and it's going to uh, sort of boost the color and eliminate a lot of those darker spots. And so usually for this one I did 150. Uh, you shouldn't really have to go a whole lot higher than this otherwise you're going to start really sort of blowing out your image like that. And you can see how it sucks in on, the, on those blacks because it's crushing them down for the key. Uh, and so you know kind of have the jittery edges and on the on the edges of me and uh, you still have some of the shadows so we're going to come into the pre-screen blur which kind of blurs the key a little bit before it pulls it uh, allowing you to just get like a, a little bit of a nicer edge uh, swap your view over to screen matte and then start to uh, clip your black and increase your clip black until you see this gray area which represents my shadow uh, you kind of see it going away and so right around 60 and then you can lower the clip white because you're seeing some gray area on me the white area so you don't want that so you can lower that down you know anywhere between like 80 85 will be good uh, and we're going to keep a lot of the information that i've pulled from the key now uh and you don't ever want to intersect these because as you can see it swaps it and you'll actually uh you'll pull a key that doesn't make any sense so don't ever swap them uh, to keep them far away from each other, as far away from each other as you possibly can with still getting a good key. <laughs> I like to switch my replacement method over to hard color uh, just because I like to. And then our final result, you can see we're pulling a pretty decent key. For your replace color, I like to kind of transfer it over to more of a, a gray blue because we're on a blue screen. If you're on a green screen, 
Uh, obviously, you'd want to go to a, a green, greenish gray. But uh, just transfer it over a little bit. You don't have to do anything too crazy. And this kind of helps the, the edges blur a little bit better. Uh, and you know what? That's pretty much it for the keying. Uh, we pulled a pretty solid key out of it. And uh, the last uh, technique I usually do is called the refine mat. And that's new with After Effects. Uh, you throw that on to... And uh, you can see it really takes a lot of those edges away. So that's the before the refine mat, and here is the after. And uh, you know, don't worry about some of these spots with the garbage mat. Uh, the only downside about the refine mat is it's a real render hog. So uh, throw it on and then turn it off, and don't forget to turn it on before you render the final image out. <laughs> and uh, if you noticed, we have one more problem with this shot. And it's uh, my legs go in and out, and so do my feet of the shot itself. So the uh, quickest way to fix that is to uh, duplicate your footage, which is uh, Command D, Control D, or uh, Edit Duplicate. Uh, you know, rename it obviously, uh, so you don't confuse the two. I like to call this one Roto. And uh, this is the here comes the fun part. Everybody who works in After Effects knows that Rotoing is the best, and it's not. So delete your mask, and pretty much you just have the, the same thing that we started with before we did any of the effects. Uh, and then you're going to want to come in, zoom in a little bit, and uh, start to draw a roto mask around the areas that leave the green screen. So I'm going to do this one real fast. You're obviously going to want to refine it a little bit. And the, uh, the good part about this roto is uh, my foot doesn't really change shape outside of actually moving around because I'm in a shoe. And so you don't need to do a whole lot of, uh, you know, rotoing on the shoe itself. Uh, if you double click on one of the points, you're going to pull up this uh, bounding box. And if you'll notice right here, it's kind of tough to see because of the background, but right here you have this little target reticle. If you move that up to the top where my knee should be, or basically it forms a hinge, it's its anchor point. So now when you rotate it, it's going to rotate around that target area. And that pretty much works for anywhere the target area goes. So you can kind of see the difference there. Uh, obviously move to the top because my leg is kicking sort of that sort of represents the knee joint and then hit MM on your keyboard and that'll bring up your mask path and all of your mask options hit the mask path keyframe uh, page down and step forward a couple keyframes and then basically just rotate your uh, rotate your roto points basically just do that forward and backwards until you've rotoed the entire clip uh, it's a real kind of a pain but the uh, extra effort goes a long way and uh, you can kind of leave some blue in here too and throw just a, a key light feature back onto this and tweak the settings and you can get the blue out. So you can be, this roto is a little bit more forgiving. And obviously you do the same thing with, with the hands. And uh, you know, after you put in all of the work, it's, uh, it's very rewarding. As you can see, here's all the rotoing and the keyframes that I had to do um, for the final project. Uh, a lot of keyframes, obviously with faster movement, you're gonna wanna do more keyframes. Uh, pretty much a keyframe every frame and slower movement as you can see right in here I've, I've spaced out some of the keyframes but uh, the roto looks like this here are my masks that I've used and then just rotate each one over the uh, two seconds and then you know uh, after it's all put together you can composite into your shot uh, scale myself down to kind of hide some of the danger areas uh, the stuff that I didn't get super right and uh, you know from there you can uh, pull off a pretty cool shot but uh, those are the quick blue screen tips. Uh, you should never have to come across a key that it's this bad uh, unless you're out in the elements like we were. And, uh, you know, you don't have much of a choice. So sometimes you don't have a choice uh, with, you know, getting your blue screen lit right. Uh, if you're in a studio, you'll never have to come across this. And key light works like a charm. But uh, don't forget, if you have a, a problem key, uh, I like to mess with the screen gain, the screen pre-blur. Just you don't have to change it a lot. And then the uh, clip white, clip black, and the um, replace color. And then after everything's said and done, you can uh, screen shrink it just a little bit to hide some of your uh, trouble areas. So just a small little screen shrink, and uh, you should be good to go, pulling a pretty solid key. But uh, I hope this was helpful. If you guys need uh, any more tips or tricks, just uh, please leave a comment in the uh, bottom, and I'll try to help you as much as possible. And uh, thanks for watching. See you guys.